Hey everybody, Andrew here. Today is Wednesday the 29th of January 2014 and today was a vape mail day. Now vape mail, it really is, I've said it before, I'll continue to say it, is one of life's great joys. And uh, to be honest at this stage, if something doesn't arrive in, and believe you me, stuff doesn't arrive in every day, I'm there to be found sitting on the stairs, head in hands, depressed, wondering where it all went wrong. But today isn't one of those days because I got a nice package. And this package came from Greece and it came from Katerina and Michalis in at Mamakani in Greece. And it is, well there's two things in it. I'm just going to show you this first one first. And it is this. Now it's the atomizer on this, as you can see it here. And it's sitting on a nemesis there, but let's see if you can see it nice and close. It is the striker, which is their new uh, rebuildable dripping atomizer. Now this is a vicious ant uh, drip tip on the top of it, so this is the unit here that we're talking about. And it is fantastic. And now I don't have, I think it would look even better if I had a polished nemesis, I don't. Uh, I just have a brushed one here. I just have a brushed one. I have a brushed one here, and but I still at that I think it looks absolutely fantastic on it. So um, yeah, and in sort of eighteen three fifty mode, it's a very very dinky little thing. So let's just give it a quick go. It works a dream, an absolute dream. And really, really good flavor off it as well. Now in reality, it's very, very similar, and you'll see it when I, when I start taking it apart. Um, you would have seen me do this a while back ago, the 3D dripper uh, from Atma Makani, which is basically an auto feed dripper. Um, in this case, it is the dripper part without the auto feed. Um, so rather than it having a tank in it, every time you need to basically put some more liquid into it, you just drop it into the top. So uh, just as a size comparison, let's just hold these two up here. There we've got the striker and we've got the 3D. And you can see size-wise there's a considerable difference, but there's also considerable sort of similarities when you look at the top of them as well. Um, lots of different uh, air hole settings on it, as I said, dual coil, uh, also single coil. Single coil would be my sort of preferred um, way of vaping. And then we've got our lovely logo on the front there, which I actually really like this one. So it's the, um, the steam machine or the, the train in the middle there at Mama County, Stryker, and uh, then you've got the crosshairs on it. And in my particular case, uh, the serial number is 1951, and no, that's not my birth year. A little bit younger than that. Not much, but a little bit. So, best thing is, we'll go down close, have a look at it, and uh, then we can have a chat afterwards. Let's have a closer look at this. Um, as I showed you earlier on, there's our logoing on it. So let's, easiest thing always, because this is a 510, remember, this uh, doesn't uh, screw directly into the mod. So we'll just uh, take the top off there, and then we can screw the deck off. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, there are uh, other versions of this that you can actually get that screw directly into the mod. Uh, much like the 3D here, you can see that this has actually got Nemesis threading on it. So in that case, the way it works is you take the top part off like this, and then this just screws directly into it like that, so that you get a completely uh, clean line where it actually connects, like that there. So this is available with that kind of threading at the bottom. But I think it's great that it's also available as a 510. So this just means you can use it on anything. So just looking at it here, first of all, um, again, very much like the uh, the inside of the dome, of the, uh, sorry, the um, 3D. So you can see three posts here, 
and in each case you've got a little washer and then you've got a little thing that pushes up underneath it and again looking at it here you can see it's exactly the same system so there's a washer uh, under the two sides here and then you've got your center um, positive there and in each case we've got uh, Phillips head screws all stainless steel a nice deep well on the inside there and then you can see that there's good two o-rings around the edges which uh, keep it very very well sealed in and at the bottom then we've got our 510 connection at the main unit itself we have it's this is made up of two parts so what we can do is take this part off here which is the ring which contains holes for the air holes and then this side here at the top and I believe I may be wrong on this but I think that there is a version that doesn't have these lines on it but I think that these lines are great because uh, they act as a, a sort of a heat sink to so that when this gets hot it, uh, it basically um, dissipates the heat that much quicker. Uh, the chamber inside when you've got everything actually put inside uh, the chamber is reasonably small uh, which I think probably helps uh, the flavor somewhat but again nice decent lump of uh, stainless steel there again looking at it you can see wherever there is a hole you have a little pip or a little dimple rather here to actually indicate where the holes are so that that means that when you've actually got the sleeve on it you can tell exactly where there is a hole so that you know where to line it up on this so I think that works very well again just attention to detail uh, looking on this ring here well the logo as I showed you earlier on then we've got the holes we've got three holes and um, the serial number on the back now the reason that there are three holes are this big hole here is the hole that controls the single coil airflow. These two holes here, which are both one and a half, um, control the dual coil. Because obviously with a dual coil you want air coming in from both sides, on a single coil just from one side. So the way they work it is that you've got this big hole here, which is a three mil hole, and that will then, on the three mil hole here, if I can find it, when that goes on to that, that is obviously giving you a three mil. I get it right. That's giving you a three mil hole, and then as you turn it, that is giving you a two mil hole, a one point five mil hole, and a one point two mil hole. And then that's it. So that's your sequence for the single hole. So that's the big hole, always does the single coil. The smaller hole here, this does the dual coil. And you can see you've got a one and a half mil hole there. And you've got a one and a half mil hole there. So that's how it works in that case. So it's very simple if you just remember the big hole is always controlling the single coil and the two small holes are always controlling the dual coil. So um, obviously in the dual coil mode it's two by one and a half equaling three. Uh, now for your dual coil you can't change that. That's, that's what you have unless you decided that you want to actually drill it out a bit. Uh, but that's entirely up to you. Uh, for me, I found with the dual coil, with the two one and a halves, it works perfectly well. So, and then this just slits, slits, excuse me, uh, this just slips snugly back in here. It's a good firm connection, meaning that it'll never actually slip off. So that's it. Now I'm just going to put a single coil onto this. Um, what I have here is a coil wrapped around an M3 screw, if you can see that. Eight wraps of 0.32 millimeter canthal. So what we're going to do is basically just put it onto one side here. Now, as I think I mentioned earlier on, you have little washers here. You can see the little washer here. There's none in the middle. But what you need to do is basically hook the wire between the washer and the post, the washer here and the post just underneath it here. So 
So now, never that easy to do on camera, but um, let's give it a go. Again, doing it this way where you actually use a screw or a drill bit or whatever tends to make things considerably easier when you're actually setting things up. So we have the first one here going in underneath here. So what we can do is pull that around like that, hold it, and then tighten that up. So that's our first one in place. And then the second one, we're pulling around here, like that. And we can tighten that one up as well. So what we are left with is something like that. So everything looks like it is as it's meant to be. So what we can do is just take the screw off, in this case, or drill bit if that's what you've used. And we're left with a little coil like that. Okay, so we'll uh, snip off the ends. And again, you want to make sure that if you have a little bit sticking out of the side there, you don't want it touching onto the post. So if you see it like that and you can't get it um, tucked in any further, or rather cut off any further, what you need to do is just bend it in like that, just so it's not touching off the side. So on the middle one, we won't have that issue. We just get that in position and just snip it off. And there we go. So the next thing for us to do is take it off the stand here and put it onto a mod to heat it up. Next thing for us to do is to heat up the little coil here. Um, I have it on the Nemesis, so literally we'll just be pushing the button. What you really need to remember though is when you push the button, you're going to be using a little tweezers to basically compress the coil. But if you try and do that and you've still got the button pushing, then you're going to have a short and you're going to have a wee bit of a problem. So let's um, just get this thing going here. Just tighten the button up. There we go. Till it glows nice and red. Lift it off so there's no power going in and then gently squeeze the coil together. And hold it till it cools down just a little bit. As you see now, it's actually starting to hold together. So we just need to do that maybe one or two more times. Again, just squeezing it together. Now, it should always glow from the inside out when you fire it. And that's exactly what's happening there. So that looks uh, good to go as far as I'm concerned. Now we'll just let that cool down in a second and then we're going to put some um, cotton into it. A sort of a cotton straw here which I've just rolled up just or organic unbleached cotton or unbleached cotton full stop. It can't be synthetic. It needs to be real cotton. So all we need to do is actually well, for a start, we need to lock this off so we don't go and fire it. Because if you go and fire cot cotton that is um, is not uh, wet, you're going to have a little fire on your hand in all likelihood. So let's just, sorry, just get the button right here. There we go. Pull that back. So now we have no chance of firing. So let's get the cotton. Go a little bit closer if we can. And then with a bit of a tail on the end of it, we just need to get the first part through like this. And sometimes it takes just a little bit of jiggling just to get it right. Now you need it reasonably snug in there, but you don't want it too, um, too jammed either. So after that, it's really a case of just getting cotton down on the base. Um, and it's a matter of, you know, you can decide however you want to do it yourself. You know, some people will go around the outside and then bring it in. Some people will actually go through the middle part there. Uh, I find that if you can, I prefer to actually go around the outside, which usually means just getting a little bit 
sort of shoved down there like that, down by the post. And then with this side here, I'm going to just shove that tail back in underneath. Let's get this in here like that. And really what you're trying to do is just ensure that any liquid that goes in is, has a good chance of making it up to the coil as efficiently as it possibly can do. So we can bring that around. We have a little bit too much there, so I'm going to just uh, cut a wee bit off here. Like that. And then just, if I've got my other screwdriver here, just bring a little bit of this in here like that. So we sort of, essentially we complete the circle. That'll go down there like that. So we end up with something like that. Not the neatest one I've ever done in my life, but uh, I think that should probably function pretty well. Okay, next thing for us to do is to just um, wet it down a little bit. Of course, when you wet cotton, it's, it always means that you can, it's much easier to then place everything because obviously you don't want bits hanging off over the side. You prefer to keep everything sort of contained uh, within the well. So something like that there should be just about right. Now the next thing I want to do is just uh, fire it and see that it's working. So here we go, the moment of truth. Yeah, I think it's uh, safe to say that that is uh, doing what it's meant to do. Okay, I've popped this onto the Provari just to check the uh, the ohms on it. So let's have a quick look here. And it's coming out at 1.3. Absolutely perfect. This is what it looks like with um, set up as a dual coil. I did this one earlier on and um, you can see we've got two uh, micro coils, uh, one on either side. Uh, with cotton in it and this is how she goes with this. As you can see, very very nice. So what do I think of it? I love it. I must say I really really do like it. Uh, I think it, it's, it's a terrific little dripper. And it performs very, very well. Now, what I have in that is I have uh, El Toro Cigarillos, which is my favourite um, liquid, but it's also the liquid I put in everything just to see what the comparison is. And it's as good as I've ever tasted it coming out of this. It really is. So these things are available in uh, Shined, which is this one here, which looks really, really pretty, uh, or in Matte. It's also available with, as I think I mentioned before, with uh, threading for a Nemesis, with threading for a 69 mod, or also, like this one here, as a, a 510, um, which means that you can put it onto any any different, any mod that you want to, it'll fit onto nicely. Um, so that was the reason I went for that one in particular, because I, I just love the idea. I mean, I didn't know what it was gonna be like before I got it, but I assumed because it was coming from at Mama Candy that it was going to be good. And if it was going to be good, then, you know, it's nice to have the versatility to be able to put it onto different things, different mods. Now, one thing that uh, was said to me, and I haven't actually seen it yet, but she, uh, Katerina did say that it's available without lines. I presume that means maybe without this here. So maybe it is possible to get it uh, going straight the way up to the top 
I'll have to check that out. Uh, but I think these things are really good anyway because they, they act like a sort of a heat sink. So um, if this gets very hot, you know, which drippers can do, depending on what way you're vaping them, um, all this extra surface area, these fins, it's like the inside of a computer on a processor, you know, for cooling it. Um, it just allows the, the heat to dissipate more quickly from it, and I think that that's a good idea. Um, so, 80 euro, it's not cheap. Um, but then again, it's not a cheap dripper. It's an extremely well-made dripper. Um, people are going to say, yeah, but you can, you know, go on to and get a clone of this, that or the other. And, you know, it's going to be just as good and things like that. Well, I think most of them aren't going to be just as good, to be honest. Uh, and the other thing is, is look, it's we're back to the old watch thing, you know. Um, you can go out and you can buy a cheap watch for five euro, or you can go out and buy a more expensive watch for 500 euro. And both have the, I suppose, their own place. And some people would prefer the 500 euro one and some people prefer the five euro one. In reality, you know, there is going to be a difference uh, in the performance, but not necessarily that huge initially. But over time, those differences tend to sort of shine through. Um, so for me, and I'm very lucky in this case because I was sent this free for review, um, but for me, put it this way, if you're looking for a dripper, you like Atmomacani as a brand, you have a Nemesis or if you have a 69 mod, or if you have another mod and you just like want to get into the Atmomacani uh, side of things, then I think this is, this is terrific. I really do. I love it. And um, I just hope that they, uh, Katerina and Michaelis, just keep producing these things because they really are setting the bar very high out there. And um, I'm delighted with it, I must say. Yeah. By the way, I forgot to mention to you, when's this coming out? They haven't got an actual release date yet, but as I said, today's the 29th of January. They're talking about 7 to 10 days. Uh, quite often their stuff will come out on a Monday, so that would mean next Monday week. And next Monday week would be the 23rd, around the 10th of February, something like that. Now, it could well be out before then, so I'd advise you if you want to, they will sell out. There's no doubt, when they go online, they will sell out immediately. <clears throat> so if you what they tend to do is they'll put it up at a certain time uh, on their site and it's first in first served so one of the what you may do is one of the best things to do is actually if you go to the at mama Kani, uh, Facebook page I'll put the address up somewhere uh, and then you can sort of keep an eye out there because what they tend to do is they put up the release dates for the various different items that they have coming up so that's it nothing more to say Except uh, thanks everybody for watching. Um, I've just uh, gone past uh, 2,000 subscribers, which I'm absolutely bowled over by. And um, I really, really thank any of you for subscribing. Any of you ha who haven't, um, I'll keep producing videos. I'll keep bringing them out. I have another one just to come out uh, shortly, which will be the new Lo Loki tank uh, from Atma Makani. Uh, I'll also be doing some other ones, um, you know, over the next while. So thanks very much for watching. Come back again and uh, I hope you found this interesting. All the best. Cheers.